Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. Happy Hump Day, everybody. It's a Wednesday night video. So for us over here from Milwaukee to Nashville, we would like to thank you for following us on this grand adventure of the 2020-2021 season. This is our wrap-up of the regular season. Postseason coming? Well, to be determined. However, we're hoping that you'll enjoy this. So, with that being said, we're going to give out our stat lines. Then we're going to give our regular season, um, you know, most improved, player of the year, rookie of the year, those kinds of things. Goalie of the year, stuff like that. Community guy, of, for, per our opinion. So, let's go into it. Point getter of the year for the Nashville Predators is Roman Yossi with 48 games played. He had eight goals, 25 assists, 33 points with a minus 11, 20 penalty minutes, one power play goal, 14 power play points, one shorthanded point, and three game-winning goals, two overtime goals. And, yep, that's all I got for that one. Uh, then we have Philip Forrest for 39 games played, 32 points, minus nine, 12 goals, 20 assists, uh, 16 penalty minutes, three power play goals, 13 power play points, and three game-winning goals, one overtime goal. Then we have Cal Yardcroc, 13 goals, 15, 15 assists for 28 points with a th plus 13, with 14 penalty minutes, two power play goals, four, and eight power play points, one short-headed goal, one short-headed point, two game-winning goals. Then we got Mikel Grant, 51 games played, 13 goals, 14 assists, 27 points, minus one. 14 penalty minutes, five power play goals, seven power play points. No short headed points, and one game winning goal. Then we got Victor Arvidsson. Now, Arvidsson kind of had a slow start, but yeah. 50 games played, 10 goals, 15 assists, 25 points, plus nine, 21 penalty minutes, two power play goals, three power play points, and two game winning goals. Yeah. He had also. I believe he led the team on shots on goal at 151 shots on net. Um, then we had Matias Ekholm, 40 games, 48 games played, six goals, 17 assists, 23 points, a plus 19, 19 penalty minutes, two power play points, including a wait. Yeah, two power play points and a shorthanded point, both being assists. Then we get to Ellie Tolvanen, 11 goals, 11 assists. Hey, consistency. <laughs> yeah. Uh, however, he did not have a minus or plus 11. He had a minus 10. Uh, he had four power play uh, goals, six power play points. Wait. He had four penalty minutes, six power play goals, and 12 power play points, no shorthanded. He had four game-winning goals. Ryan Johansson, seven goals, 15 assists, 22 points. No, the slow-mo ride, Joe, does not count into his stats. However, he did have 22 penalty minutes, three power play goals, seven power play points, no game-winning goals. Eric Holla, 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 if you hear me. <laughs> uh, he had 51 games played, nine goals, 12 assists, 21 points. He had a plus four. Oh, Ryan Johansson also had a zero in the plus minus. He had 14 penalty minutes. Uh, one power play goal, three power play points for Eric Halla, and two shorthanded goals along with two shorthanded points, along with two game-winning goals. Oh, wow. Two, 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 two. <laughs> he should wear the number 22. Oh, that's taken. All right. Then we got the Badger, Luke Coonan. Well, we call him the Badger because he's from, he went to the University of Wisconsin. Yeah. All righty. He had 38 games played, 10 goals, 9 assists, 19 points, three pedal, th a plus 3, 13 penalty minutes, two game winning goals, 71 shots on that. Then we got Nick Cousins, 52 games played, 5 goals, 13 assists, 18 points, 4 penalty minutes, 
or sorry, plus four, 41 penalty minutes. He had four power play points and one game winning goal. Ryan Ellis, he had five goals, 13 assists for 18 points and a plus one. He had 10 penalty minutes along with two power play goals and four power play points. Colton Sissons, 54 games played, eight goals, seven assists, 15 points, plus two, 18 penalty minutes, one power, shorthanded point, or one shorthanded goal, two shorthanded points. Rocco Grimaldi, 10 goals, thir three assists for 13 points of minus 13, but he had four penalty minutes and a shorthanded point. I wonder where that came from. The last game uh, is Carolina. All right, we got Matt Duchesne. Uh, Duchesne played in 34 games, six goals, seven assists, 13 points, and a minus 12. So for every point he scored, he pretty much let two goals in. Yikes. We got Dante Fabro. Dante Fabro had two goals, 10 assists for 12 points and a plus one. Yakov tried it. He had... Uh, 45 games played, five goals, six assists for 16 points. Or so five goals, six assists for 11 points with a plus four and 22 penalty minutes. But when I add in this particular stat, that matches his rookie stats for his first year with the Admirals. Ryan. Games played and all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got Tanner Janot. Tanner Janot. What can I say about this guy? This guy had an incredible season for the Florida Everglades, an incredible season for the Chicago Wolves, and now yeah. an incredible season getting his name well-known in Nashville. He had 15 games played, five goals, two assists, and six, a plus six with two penalty minutes. Patrick Harper, 34 games played, seven assists, seven assists. That is all he had. What a plus two. Matthew Olivier, three goals, two assists, five points, minus one, 70 penalty minutes. One Which power. leads the team. Yes, it leads the team. One power play goal. Matt Benning, he, uh, he had 53 games played, one goal, three assists, with a minus one. Brad Richardson, 17 games played, one goal, three assists for four points. Alexander Carrier, 19 games played, one goal, two assists for three points. Rob Plitlick, 10 games played, two assists uh, for a plus three. Uh, Mark Borveski, uh, the Boro cop, as he's known. Um, he has uh, 22 games played, one assist and a minus two with 38 penalty minutes which puts him third to Cousins. Then you got uh, Tyler Lewington. He had an assist, uh, two games played. Uh, Erica Bradson, nine games played and an assist. Jeremy Davies, 16 games played and one assist. Uh, yep. Other than that, we have uh, McCarron, who played six games, no points, but he had a plus one. David Ferris played two games and a plus three. Lucas Abisa played, no stats. All right, to your goaltenders. Casimir Kaskasul, one game played, three shots against, three saves. Perfect. 16 minutes on ice. <laughs> I, I chuckle, but Kaz. Great YouTube channel. Give Casimir Kaskisua a follow on YouTube as well, giving us a follow on YouTube. Um, he is a good follow for those of you who want to see the inside life of a goalie. Um, uh, so, your top goaltender this year, UC Saros, uh, 36 games played, 35 started. He has a stat line of 21 wins, 10 losses, one OT loss with uh, 1,073 saves versus 78 goals against. With a goals against average of 2.28 and a save percentage of 92.7. Not 
bad as well as three shutouts and has played over two. No, I'm not bad. 2,000 minutes. He had almost 1,000 saves in 36 games. Uh, Pecorine was the backup for most of the year this year. Starting 24 games, he or played in 24 games, started 21. He went 10, 12, and 1. Uh, stopping, uh, he had 664 shots against with 62 goals against with a goals against average of 2.84, which is still not his career high. No. Um, and the same percentage of 0.907, which is still not his career low. Right. Um, he also had played over uh, 1,311 minutes. So, rookie of the year. Obviously, that one is an easy no-brainer. Eli Tolvanen. Yeah. That one's a no-brainer. Defenseman of the year, Robin Yossi, no-brainer. Without this team, without Yossi, this team sometimes seemed lost. However, right. they rallied across his injury and fought back into a playoff spot. Um, yep. Most improved, I'd have to say Cal Yarncroft. 28 points, that's a career high for him. Yeah. Um, as far as the shortened season, I'm thinking he'd probably be in the 40-point range. Right. If it went full season, I think he'd be in the 40-point range, which – would definitely land him in, in the in the most improved. Um, right. Newcomer of the year award, Eric Halla. Um, he had nine points, nine goals, 12 assists, 21 points, which last season, I think he was lower than that. Hold on, pulling it up real quick. Last season for him... He had 22 points with Carolina and two points with Florida in seven games. So he had 24 points. I mean, in 51 games to almost match last season, yeah, newcomer. He definitely thrives in the national system. Yep. Um, Goaltender of the year is obviously UC Soros. As as much as it pains me of many, many years of saying Pecorine. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh Saros had three shutouts, had a better goals against average, had a better save percentage, had more games played. Um, so with that being right. said, they keep that goals against that same percentage where it is, and especially starting off uh three and five, that did not go well for him. So right. from that point, um, you know, in his first 10 games, he was pretty much getting trounced. Um, and when he came back from his injury, he just took the league by storm. Um, yeah. Uh, I- I'm going to say this. Um, it was definitely a tough choice on Rookie of the Year because, I I mean, Tanner Janot treaded and Olivier – uh, if anything, I want to say line of the year was the herd line. The guys, oh uh, yeah, Sissons, Trenin, Trenin, Olivier, and Janot, and as well as um, Michael McCarron being on that line as well. Uh, those guys really changed how the rest of this team plays. Yeah, um, guy who you know. Uh, definitely, you know, got and here's the thing. I'm gonna give an award this year. Guy who needs to show up. Guy who needs to show up. As far as us making the playoffs, guy who needs to show up is gonna be Matthew Shane. If Matthew Shane does not show up, Ryan Johansson stays and he's gone. Um, that's just one of the things. Now. Yeah. Uh, Guy to watch out for in the future will definitely be Philip Tomasito. I mean, he has 14, 15 points in, 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 in a very shortened AHL season. And right. imagine if, he, if we didn't have the taxi squad. Now, to wrap up all of this, we're going to go into their draft. All right? So Nashville's draft. They have their first, second, third, two fourths, a fifth, and a sixth round pick going into the draft. 
Yeah. As well, their UFAs are Mikel Granlund, Eric Holla, Brad Richardson. Their RFAs. So guys, they got to they uh, they can t- they can kind of you know just slap a tag on them and if they right. if, if a guy offers them astronomical amount of money, uh, they'll take the picks. All right, so we got Ellie Tolvanen, Reb Pitlick, Matthew Olivier, Tanner Janot, Michael McCarron. Uh, I will say this: Tolvanen will probably get a one-year, one million dollar contract. Olivier is going to get a two-year, one million dollar contract. Janot, he's probably going to get a two-year, nine nine hundred twenty-five thousand, which is AHL league max for a two-way. Yeah. Game. So for him, that's going to happen. Um, McCarron, that is to be determined as far as that. Gabrads is a UFA. He's not going to get the $4 million that he was currently getting paid. Also in RFAs, we have Dante Fabro, Jeremy Davies, and Ben Harper. We have a UFA G6, which means that he did not accrue the requirement of games played by the age of 25. So he can still be tendered. Um, goaltenders, they got to pay Pekka, Saros, and Kaskasuo. Right. Um, Saros is going to get what Pekka was getting. Pekka's probably, if he does come back, going to get what Saros was getting paid. Pekka was getting paid $5 million. Saros was getting paid $1.5. They're probably just going to flip paychecks here. Right. Real here. Pekka will take the lower money. If and Saros may take less too, just to make the t- to try and make a move at the play uh, at the deadline, right? You know, to make a move in the play in, in free agency. All right, um, they do have a buyout for next season. Um, Kyle Turris at two million, and uh, Steven said TD at two hundred and seventy five thousand. That one I don't care at all. That one doesn't bother me. Also, they got to re-sign Lucas Craigs, uh, Josh Wilkins, Cole Smith, and Anthony Richard. To my recollection, they have already done the deal with Richard. It has just not been put to paper. Um, they also have a G6 of Michael Carcone and uh, Sean Malone. Both of them can be tendered as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Rundrick, Allard, and Josh Healy, both of them are going to probably be re-signed for next season as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Three goaltenders uh, for the AHL for next year as well. If Becca does come back, you have Cutter Ingram, Devin Cooley, and Thomas Bamaka. Bamaka being the highest paid of them all at $810,810,000. Mil- $810, you see, $810 million, that's way over the cap. <laughs> Holy smokes, that's way, way over the cap. But looking forward to that as well, we do have some uh, reserve lists. I do not think we have – no, we have no one that's due in 2021. However, um, they could sign guys like Askarov, Simeon Chishikov, right. uh, Konstantin Volkov, and Vladislav Yurmenko. Now, Yurmenko's KHL contract has expired. They have not renewed it yet. I would not be surprised to see Nashville try to sign him. As well as Adam Willsby, Spencer Stasny, and Joachim Kondalik. Those right. are the guys I would not be surprised to see the French try inside. Uh, Yaroslav Askarov, if Pekka does not return, I think that will be their number one choice of, okay, bring Ingram up, let him get some years in Milwaukee, and go from there. Right. Um, if Saros doesn't head out and, and Askarov takes off, We'll go from there, but that is the current uh, Nashville. So this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. I'm Derek Goodwell. Over there we have John Lewandowski. We will see you guys in the playoffs. Everybody's fans, we'll see you tonight. Uh-oh.